welcome back in this lecture we would look at two related topics they are related in terms of fundamental mechanisms however one is to do with corrosion and the other topic of sacrificial anode is to do with corrosion protection i am dealing with both of them because the fundamental mechanisms um, are similar in both these instances so what are we looking at in the previous lectures we covered uniform corrosion and two forms of localized corrosion there is another form of localized corrosion which is galvanic corrosion which is the subject matter of this lecture so in galvanic corrosion there are two different two different metals or metallic alloys which are exposed to a common electrolyte um and corrosion occurs in one of the metal so this is the active metal this is the region where corrosion occurs so typically the one of the metal is electropositive um and the other metal is more noble okay so more electronegative um so a combination can be zinc and iron this kind of an interface um is seen often so this is zinc and this can be iron and both of them are exposed to a common electrolytic environment so when you interface a uh, electropositive metal to an electronegative metal there is a charge transfer uh, electron transfer that occurs from let's say zinc to iron so despite a charge transfer because the conductivity of the entire system uh is fairly electronic conductivity is fairly high it would still remain to be at the same potential the there will be charge transfer because of work function difference electronegativity difference but despite that uh during corrosion uh the potential will be more or less uh, the same across this metallic system so because of the charge transfer iron moves the potential of the iron moves in the cathodic direction and the potential of zinc moves in the anodic direction so both systems this active metal let's say zinc and more noble metal let's say iron in both these materials reduction does occur but what is different is that the rate of reduction in the active material is very different from the rate of reduction in the more noble metal so um the rate of reduction here might be much more than the rate of reduction in the active met metal so this is significant and important feature of galvanic uh, corrosion so because of fairly good electronic conductivity there is limited potential drop in the metallic system however there can be potential variation uh, in the electrolyte uh, in this region to this region and such potential variation in solution is critical for ion transport and current flow in the solution so these kinds of plots have been um presented in this lecture series uh, there are a lot of information that is presented here so we will get through it gradually first there is information about three different reaction the first reaction is a uh, reaction of iron so that is being presented here so let's say iron monovalent or i mean zero valent iron um will get oxidized into divalent cation and releases 
two electrons in this process. Associated with this single reaction, there are anodic and cathodic processes. And that is when the cathodic um, current density, the absolute magnitude of the cathodic current density becomes equal to the absolute magnitude of the um, oxidation and reduction current. When they become equal, you may define a null potential. So what is being plotted here is the x-axis, you have the potential. On the y-axis, we have log of oxidative current that is indicated uh, for iron via this red line and log of negative of reduction current that is indicated by this blue line. So these kinds of representation have been already presented a few times in this lecture series. Please go and refer to um, uh, the previous lectures to understand this in greater detail. So associated with this single reaction, you have a null potential. Then you may have other processes. For example, you will have another electrochemical reaction associated with uh, zero valent zinc getting oxidized to divalent zinc, the aqueous uh, medium, which goes into the aqueous medium with the release of two electrons. Like we talked about iron, we can have the null potential for zinc. So null potential is the potential at which the oxidative current of zinc, that is zinc going from this state to uh, this state, is equal to the magnitude of the reduction current. Reduction current is um, when this species, when these species go to uh, zero when zinc. That is associated with the null potential specified here. Then there is this third reaction, which is to do with hydrogen evolution reaction. Again, you may have, you do have an oxidative current and reduction current associated uh, with both these currents when the magnitude of the reduction current becomes equal to the absolute magnitude of the oxidative current, you will have a null potential associated with the hydrogen evolution reaction. So till now, we are not really talking anything about corrosion. So what we need to connect is the different possible, possible uh, reactions uh, with each other to start thinking about corrosion. For example, let us think about uh, a pair of reaction. That is, this can be one reaction and this is other reaction. And that's the way we thought about corrosion in a uniform corrosion cell. So when you consider a pair of reaction, this reaction with this reaction, when the oxidative current from zinc corrosion matches the reduction current of hydrogen evolution, you can specify the corrosion potential for that set of process. So, so right now, we are considering just two reactions associated with these two reactions, we may define a corrosion potential for zinc. So remember, we are describing the galvanic corrosion when there is a zinc ion interface. When there is such an interface because of good electronic conductivity between zinc and iron, the potential across the entire system is one and the same. So that will be determined by the zinc corrosion potential. The rate of these process, that is that zinc, um, zero valent zinc getting converted to divalent zinc, this rate is much greater than any other oxidative process. So the entire potential of that galvanic interface is determined by the corrosion potential of zinc. So this is critical because Notice the title of the slide. We are reducing the corrosion of iron via zinc 
corrosion via via sacrificing zinc. So once we have specified zinc corrosion potential, instead of the oxidative processes of iron determined by the null potential, uh, the oxidative process, that is zero valent iron getting converted to this, is no longer determined by the null potential of iron, but it is determined by the corrosion potential of zinc, which is the potential at which iron is also present in the galvanic interface. So the essential aspect of galvanic corrosion in this system is determined by the tripartite corrosion or mixed potential. This is one and the these are synonymous terms. Corrosion potential is the same as mixed potential. This condition, that is when you have an interface that is a zinc and iron galvanic coupling is exposed to a common electrolyte, the condition that needs to be enforced is the sum of three currents. That is the oxidative current in zinc plus the oxidative current in iron plus the reductive current in iron has to be zero. When you have only zinc and um, this reduction reaction, the condition is the oxidative current of zinc plus the reductive uh, current. The reduction current of hydrogen evolution reaction has to be zero. Or when you have only the corrosion of iron, then uh, that will be established by corrosion current, uh, corrosion potential involved with two reaction that is this reaction and this reaction establishes the corrosion potential of iron but when there is this galvanic coupling the condition that needs to be enforced is this condition and because the rate of zinc corrosion is much more than the rate of iron corrosion the potential that is established in the zinc iron galvanic couple is determined by the zinc corrosion potential. Essentially, the si sim single important conclusion is that the anodic processes of iron gets reduced from this level, current goes down from this level to this level. But while you have suppressed iron corrosion, what we are losing in this process is zinc. Zinc's oxidative processes gets in, uh, increased. Um, that is, with the loss of zinc, you are able to protect iron. So that is the important feature. So the same um, mechanistic, mechanistic um, processes occur both in galvanic corrosion as well as sacrificial zinc anodic protection of iron. So this is a widely utilized method of uh, corrosion protection. Uh, for example, what we see here is the rudder of a ship and this is the hull of a ship. Look at the length scale. This is uh, a real picture of a man here and this will give you the scale of uh, the structure we are trying to protect. What is uh, seen here are these whitish objects are zinc uh, metal coupled galvanically to the steel structures uh, which are indicated by the darker uh, um, pictures here. Okay, So these darker elements uh, of this entire structure are steel and this is zinc. So you may what is important to notice is the value of steel, you cannot just um, assign a value independently of the structure wherein uh, steel is present. So the value of steel when it is present in a ship is much more than a value of steel in some other structure. So um, depending upon the value of uh, steel, you may lose some zinc to protect the entire structure. So this is an important uh, uh, method of corrosion protection. So 
it's a uh, uh, important uh, topic to be discussed in these corrosion lectures so in the next lecture which is just the follow up lecture of this topic we will look at the current distribution in galvanic corrosion and sacrificial anode um, protection um, that will be elaborated in the next lecture thank you